Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, so today I am going to talk on a very important topic related to communication and that is called communication styles. So I shall be talking little bit in the beginning what exactly uh, we understand about the communication and then gradually I shall take up to the topic. Uh, to begin with, uh, just I would like to say that communication originates from the Latin word and that is called communis, C O M, -M U N I S, which means to make common. This is something very simple. As we all know, that communication it is a two way process, and if we are not able to make something common, it is not communication. Communication will be only affected and effective if we are interacting, talking and listening. That means, it is going in both ways. Now, today I am going to talk about the communication style, which is really a very interesting topic in this area, because each individual has got something uh, unique in his or her behavior about communication style. So, just I would like to show some slides and then I will explain further. There is a direct link between the quality of our communication and the quality of our life. Every day since morning till evening, we are communicating with different types of people. So, it is very important that what we communicate, but is still more important how do we communicate. It matters a lot, because with the changing time people have become very sensitive and we have to be very much aware about our communicative behavior whenever we are interacting with the people. So, contents of course, is important, but today I am going to put more emphasis about the style means how we are going to communicate. The first step towards effective communication with others is successful communication with yourself. Now, here I would like to say something related to communication that we very often try to interact with others and see that how a person is communicative. But at the same time, it is very, very important that we have to learn how we communicate with ourselves. In fact, this is an area which is called intrapersonal communication, which means before we start communicating with others, we have to be very much sure that my communication with myself is very effective. I shall be talking in detail when I shall take up the topic intrapersonal communication, how it happens. It is nothing but understanding our own uh, self and if we are very much confident about our own self and there are so many things related to self which I shall be discussing in my next topic. Now, uh, we must either learn to live together or increase our chances of prematurely dying alone. This is very important. Time has changed and you see that we have to do several things. We have to, we have to compete with others and we have to understand others feelings and behaviors. It is not that whatever I feel proper 
that is the final thing. We have to understand the feeling, we have to understand the working style, we have to take people along to perform certain things. I may be very sincere and energetic in my efforts, but at the same time we have to develop understanding and habits to work with our colleagues, with our team members, with our groups. So, it is not that I can do alone everything. Of course, my personal efforts are very, very important, but at the same time we cannot ignore others input, others behavior, others understanding. Now, coming to our communication style. Uh, once a style of communication can be the source of many problems like marriage counselors and divorce lawyers indicate that a breakdown in communication is the most frequently cited reason for relational dissolution in the United States. A specific kind of communication that is public speaking is one of the most frequently cited fears people have even more than they fear death. So, communication is something very uh, unique and interesting uh, in our life and uh, as we can understand that it may be source of many problems. Because whatever we are speaking people sometimes do not react, but they keep it with uh, them and later on this reaction might come. So, we have to be very careful in each and every aspect of communication, whatever we are speaking, understanding the situation, understanding the context and understanding the mood of that person at that particular moment, if we are really interested that our communication should be effective. Generally, people do not react to what we say, instead they react to how we say. So, this how is very, very important. Those, those who are the experts in communication they have written number of books uh, in this area and emphasize the importance of styles. And they have emphasized the manner, the way we communicate and interact with people. So, someone has said that motivation is everything and the only way to motivate people is to communicate with them. We have to communicate. It is important to talk to people in their own language. When I say in their own language, it does not mean that uh, basically the language what a person is speaking. There is a language within language that means, we have to understand the person's feeling, the person's mood, behavior, the way he or she will understand the things, the timing, the context and only if you understand all these aspects, we may be in a better position. Communication style the language that exists within all languages and shows us how to use style to get others to follow us to death. We all understand that there are people who motivate people, who motivate their followers in such a way that they become ready to sacrifice their life. This is nothing, just it is a it is a significance of communication, how these people are communicating with them. And these people become so much involved, so much influenced that they are ready to do whatever they are said. So, in a way communication is playing very, very important role in all aspects of life. Now, coming to what exactly the style mean, styles means the way we communicate communication style is a matter of choice, effective communicators develop the ability to use more than one style. We all have one particular way of communicating and talking with others, but uh, two people cannot have the similar kind of communication pattern, each one is having their own way of uh, talking. So, one has to understand the, the, the how the people are speaking and it is very, very important because we cannot change others style, but at the same time we can understand and if we have a better understanding 
about the styles of others, then perhaps it is easier to change, to adjust our own style to get the work done, to make the communication effective. Because at times it is very difficult and even it is impossible to tell others that you please do not talk in this way, in this manner. But at least if you have a proper understanding, then we can change ourselves. We should be uh, a little bit uh, all the time ready to accept the fact and depending on the situation, if we are able to change our style, we will be in a better position. Now, I am going to talk about uh, different types of styles. In fact, uh, there are a number of styles uh, written by or explained by experts, but I personally found that the three styles which are called noble, socratic and reflective very, very important. Noble is very Aristotelian, Socrates, Socratic is akin to Socrates and the reflective is reminiscent of Plato. In fact, these names have come out of the names of these great ph Greek philosophers and there is a purpose, there is a meaning behind all these communication styles. So, I will start with the first one. The first one is called the noble communication premise. So, what exactly is the noble communicator? Uh, if I say in very briefly explain this, it will be like that, that noble are the communicators who are very direct and straightforward. They always prefer or like to speak only the truth. They do not like to uh, interact in ifs and buts. They will come to the state forward to the point. Uh, so, here we can say that noble is a true believer who expects the personal feelings of the self to play a secondary role in the communication interaction. The noble believes that the primary purpose of communication is the exchange of information and honest opinions. So, these people uh, take the credit, they enjoy and they always prefer that whatever they are saying, it is the they will speak the truth, they will speak the mind, they will never bother what other person are thinking about, what others feel about. Rather, whatever comes to their mind, they will speak then and there without understanding the consequences. Because we are human being and many times perhaps it is not very practical to speak directly at the face of the person. So, sometimes it might not be very effective also, but because of very nature, because of their, because of their very behavior, they all the time uh, practice or they communicate in this manner. So, when I am going to explain these communication styles, each communication style has got certain uh, weaknesses, certain strengths that also I would like to mention. What are the strengths of these uh, this uh, these type of, uh, of communicators, they are very assertive, very organized, very focused and because of their, their nature, they get the credibility, they are very, they, they whenever they speak, they speak in an animated way and they are considered to be a good leader because of their behavior. So, these are their strengths, but at the same time, they have got certain weaknesses as well. At times, these kind of people, these kind of communicators become very aggressive. They generally are eat at inattentive when people are talking with them uh, something different, something else other than the topic, other than the issue. Generally, these kind of people are perfect, perfectionists means they want that each and everything should be perfect. They believe in absoluteness but this is, this is not the something very practical. Uh, many times there might be uh, some, some gap or there might be certain things which might not be 100 percent true, but these people always expect that everything should be perfect from all respects. And they can, they cannot tolerate means then they are generally intolerant. The reason is very simple because of their behavior, because of their straightforwardness, because they think they take pride uh, of uh, being a direct and straightforwardness 
and because of these qualities they never bother about these things. So, naturally these things become their uh, weaknesses. Now, coming to the next communication style that is called the Socratic communication uh, style. So, here I will just read that what exactly Socratic mean. The Socratic is the individual who is most concerned with rhetoric and the analysis of details. He or she believes that communication is the primary purpose of verbal interaction. Now, these are the people who believe that communication means interacting with people, talking with people. They enjoy talking, they love talking, wherever, whenever uh, they, great, uh, uh, they get opportunity, they love talk with people. So, these people are very good in speaking, they, they have very good command over language, they are able to uh, they develop uh, a good rhetoric means art of speaking and they have lots of information uh, with the people and whenever they get chance they enjoy. So, Socratic means they are very talkative, they are very analytical, they have lots of information, they try to persuade people. Uh, we have lots of examples uh, in our society, uh, in our uh, workplace or wherever whenever we are traveling we do come across such type of people that they love talking. They talk and talk and talk means talking one can say that uh, this is their habit and they develop these kind of habit uh, perhaps from the very beginning from the childhood. Uh, one can observe that there are people who speak less and there are people who, uh, who keep on talking, they enjoy talking, they love talking. So, whenever they get chance they will talk. If you ask even very simple thing uh, they will not explain in one or two sentences rather than they keep on talking for several minutes. So, we can very easily understand the person is talking too much, but these kind of people are also uh, very important for certain kinds of job. Say for example, those who are uh, uh, sales personals or sales women, sales men, uh, if they are given this kind of task to perform, they do it very nicely. The moment they meet the customer, they talk in such a way that they persuade them to show the things and also they persuade to buy certain things. So, these people are also very important for certain kind of job, but at the same time, uh, these people uh, create problem for others uh, when there is a sort of time or people are not interested to listen uh, anymore, but because of their very habit they keep on talking. So, just like the first one noble communicator, this second one that is Socratic communicators are also having certain strengths as well as weaknesses. So, first what are the strengths? Rhetoric sophistication means, rhetoric means they have very a good art of speaking, they can use very nice language, words and sentences uh, to persuade others, persuasiveness, they can persuade others and they can analyze the things, they are very thorough, they can give lots of details and because of their lots of information, they get the credibility and they have very good uh, idea about illustrating the things. I can cite uh, uh, some simple examples like uh, if you uh, meet uh, by chance this type of people and just you ask that how can uh, I go to some particular place. So, simply they will not explain you the place rather than the, they will prefer to ask uh, what is your name, from where have you come, uh, why have you come etcetera, etcetera and unnecessarily they will talk perhaps you might not like. So, they have lots of you know good ideas in illustrating, explaining, elaborating the things. Now, because of their uh, these kind of uh, behavior, there are certain weaknesses of this uh, kind of communicators. Rhetorical rigidity means they are very rigid, uh, they are not good listeners means they will all the time try to speak and speak and speak. And if there is an interruption, they do not like interruption, others should not interrupt uh, uh, these people, because they think that uh, whatever they are saying that is final, that is good and everybody is supposed to listen to them. And verbosity I have already explained, 
that they are very vocal, very talkative. Arrogance means they become arrogant at times uh, because uh, if uh, somebody is interrupting and saying that uh, why they are repeating, why they are taking too much time, uh, they will not like and they will react and sometimes they become rude also. Uh, and dogmatism means uh, they, they feel that whatever they are saying, they are saying with authority, uh, which perhaps others might not like. So, these are the weaknesses about these kind of people. Now, coming to the third type of communicator that is called reflective communicators and this is the reflective communication premise. Now, the reflective believes that the primary purpose of communication is the maintenance or advancement of the personal relationship. The accurate transmission of information, expression or opinions and tangible results play a secondary role in the communication encounter. So, these reflective communicators basically they are the persons who are very humble, very polite, very submissive and uh, they think several times before they interact with people. For them, the primary purpose of communication is the maintenance and advancement of relationship. Uh, they always think that they should not speak any such thing which might unnecessarily create problem for others or others should get angry, others should get annoyed, others should feel bad. So, these are the people always very cautious and always think that uh, we should never uh, make any problem, create any problem through our communication behavior in relationship. Because these people are very sensitive and they are very good listener in fact. Uh, whenever a person is uh, interacting with them, they will listen patiently and not only listen, but they will try to give some solution. They will try to uh, uh, find out the uh, ways to overcome the problems, they will try to help uh, whatever is possible. So, these people are very sensitive and very good listener having lots of patience and they think that in life the most important thing is that maintenance of relationship. Because this is something very simple, making or breaking relationship largely depends on our communication behavior. It takes several years, it takes months to build relationship, but to break relationship it will take just one or two years. So, this is very, very important. So, these type of communicators are very cautious about their communication behavior. Now, like previous two communication styles, this these kind of people also have got uh, some strengths as well as uh, some weaknesses. So, first I would just explain about their strengths. Accuracy means they are a very accurate because they are a very good listener. So, they will be listening everything with accuracy, very accurate. Whatever information they are having that is very accurate. Patience, they have lots of patience to listen. Supportive, they support people to come forward to help. They are very open uh, to the issues, to the problem, for the discussion. And conciliation, these kind of people consult that means suppose if they had some bitter experience or some problem uh, with others, with colleagues, uh, they will just uh, forgive and forget. It is not that they will keep on remembering that issue event forever. So, they reconcile. And empathy, these kind of people have lots of empathy for others. There is a difference between sympathy and empathy. Empathy means putting oneself uh, in that particular situation and trying to understand the issues, the problem. So, they always try, if there is issue, there is problem, try to solve, try to help, try to support, try to suggest whatever in whatever way they feel proper. So, these people are in one can say that uh, very good in these aspects, but as you know that we are human being. So, uh, these qualities always might not be good in all the contexts. So, these people have got also some weaknesses. And these are some of the weaknesses that is uh, like passiveness. These people are not very active in a meeting, in discussion. Uh, these people will listen and they will not react. 
So, they are just uh, sitting idle not speaking because all the time they are thinking that if, if they say something perhaps uh, some people might not like it and if they are reacting others will get angry or others will get dissatisfied. So, always they are uh, somehow in a dilemma what to say, what not to say and because of this behavior they become vulnerable because others take for granted whatever they are saying, uh, they take for granted and use the decision the way they like. So, they become the prey, they become the victim, they are very vulnerable and their indecisiveness means they are not able to take the decision and as a result they are incredible because people think that this kind of people, uh, these kind of people are not able to take any decision, so they are not getting any credit for that. So, I have explained three kinds of you know communication styles that is called noble which are uh, who are very direct and straightforward, other one is Socratic who are very talkative and they love talking and they try to persuade others and third one is their uh, third one is the reflective communication style that means they are very very humble and polite and submissive. So, just to conclude to be born a gentleman is an accident, but to die a gentleman is an achievement. To become a gentleman, a, a successful orator, a good teacher or a good husband or wife, a father or a son, it is believed that one must learn the art and science of effective communication. This will help individuals not only to have good relationship with others, but also to lead a meaningful and successful life. So, friends, life should be meaningful. Of course, success is very, very important and to make the life meaningful, it is very, very important that we try to understand, we should be able to be little bit alert, cautious in our communication behavior, particular through our style. And if we are able to understand others styles and we try to adjust our style we will be in a better position. For example, if from the communication behavior we understand that the person is a noble kind of a communicator, then we should also behave like that. If a person is Socratic that means very talkative, we should have patience to listen to them and if a person is reflective type of communicator, if we behave like that, we shall be uh, in a better position than others because it will match the frequency and it will be better to understand each other because the whole purpose of communication is how to make our communi communication effective and how can we get our work done. So, we have to develop this kind of strategies, all kinds of communication styles are very good, only we have to understand that which one will be the best one in proper context and situation and if you are behaving like that, perhaps we shall be in a better position and we shall have effective communication with others. So, with this I finish this lecture that is communication styles. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.